This is it. The day you've all been waiting for. I've got the Suburban and the trailer hooked up, and I'm going down to pick up my four-post lift. Uh, so, after much deliberation, I have chosen the lift, and I am dragging it home. So, here it is, the lift. Yeah, totally psyched. Ah, oh, this garage has been waiting for this lift for a very long time, so. Atlas Garage Pro 8000 EXT, step one. Remove plastic wrap from top runway and remove all hardware, safety lock rods, hoses, cables. You should also find this manual in the top runway. So that's what I'm gonna do. That's what it looks like in the top runway. They've got, uh, these are your lock rods, um, more lock rods, cables, a bunch of really thick plate, a couple of other things, a hose. Anyway, they want all this stuff out of here. This next part, you're supposed to extend the cylinder out 18 inches from the end of the runway, which I can't do. There's no way this will go that far. This is at the end of its travel. It also, you know, makes all the cables loose, so I'm not really sure about those directions, but anyway. Next, unbolt the top runway from the shipping plate at each end of the package. Be sure to secure runway with hoist to prevent runway from falling. So I have to figure out how to hold this. There's a reason there's no video of this part, because this part did not go well at all. My tractor is not strong enough to pick up one of the ramps. So that was all I could do to get it off and set it on the ground. So now I have to push it in by hand. Uh, luckily, I think the bottom is lighter. This thing is heavy. It's got the cylinder in it. All those cables. All right, so I'm here. Day two. Well, last night my intent was only to unload it, which I have done. And it is now unloaded all over the place. The ramps are really heavy, um, but that's good. Thing. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna start putting this thing together. Uh, the instructions are totally wrong. Uh, it's almost like they're made for a lift that uh, it doesn't even exist. So I'm going to do my best trying to figure out what they mean. Um, uh, so yeah, let's get started. Check these out. Half inch 
plate steel. Isn't that insane how thick that is? So I believe these are going go on the top of the columns. And these will basically support the entire weight of the lift and the vehicle. I know, it's crazy. I'm going to install the cross rail into the column. But because I don't want to pick it up and set it in the columns, I'm going to do it the reverse. Try the lock rails. So these are the lock rails here, and all the directions they say, oh, the lock rails are already in the columns. Well, they're not, at least on the one that I got. So um, I don't know if there's a front or a back. It looks symmetrical. The cuts all look square, so I'm going to assume there's no front and back, and. If you look in the column, you can actually see a slot where this would go. So check this out. See that slot there? And that slot there? That's where the lock plate slides down into. Well, stupidly, I didn't take a video, but I just stood that up. It was relatively uneventful. So, now I'm going to install the lock bars. Should be able to just take this. Slide it in here. What I'm doing here is installing this top plate, and you can see a bolt, a bolt, a bolt, a bolt, all the way around, la la la. Now I'm tightening it. I have this lock ladder uh, installed, and they all need to be installed the same. So I'm going to do the same on this side, the same for the back columns. As you can see, I have my tractor in here. I also have an engine hoist which I probably need to use both in order to lift these ramps up safely and still be able to control them on, and set them on top of these beams. But for right now, I'm gonna start with these top caps and go from there. There's like 16 bolts and 32 washers and it's gonna take a while. Okay, so that top plate is installed. Look at that thing, it's half inch plate steel. Um, Note where the hole is on the left. That's where your cable is going to go. And so, it should be on the side where your cable is. The inside. Okay, so I'm well on my way. I have the top plates, the locking ladders. That's all tight. That's all tight. I lifted the crossbar and it locked into the two locking ladders. So that is locked in place. Now I need to do the same on the back one. Then position them in place and then lift the ramp. Now it says to do the cylinder one first, but I'm gonna find it easy, oh, I don't know. I may do it at the same time with the engine hoist on one side and the tractor on the other. I uh, don't know yet, we shall see. Okay, let me show you what I have so far. Both of the cross beams are done. They're up in the locked, jack, locked position. So is the other one. I have this ramp connected to an engine hoist and I've got it almost into place. Then I'm going to take my tractor and lift the other one both up so that I can then slide the end cross member in because these go over the top. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, um, yeah, I just wanted to do a quick update. Uh, on how it's going. This is a very, very uh, tedious process. These are very heavy and I don't want them falling. So, first thing I'm going to do is raise this up. Bolt that in so it just stays put. 
I hope these are right balls. Let's see what it says. Baltimore plays using three quarter inch hole towards the outside of the cross rail. Using the three quarter inch holes towards the outside of the cross rail. The four drop in ramp plates will be used with the spacer side facing the left. Doesn't help at all. Wow. I don't know how cool I am with putting my fingers in here, but. side of one ramp bolted. What I'd like to do is pick this one up and bolt that in. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Side. And, and slide this thing on. That's it. So now, assuming it's double. That's pretty close to where it needs to be. It's nice. There's no washers. Oh no, it's just Okay, so. Wow, unbelievable. Okay, so they're on there, somehow. Okay, so I have the ramps in place. They're solidly bolted. <clears throat> the next step 
is to figure out this tangled mess of cables. Now, they have them zip tied. Where is it? These are zip tied together. Um, and you basically, your end is running out that way and you're gonna bring it back <coughs> and run it out through here. So you, can, you can't really see, but there's a pulley there. I'm just gonna come out and come up. <clears throat> and you can see, as I've done to these right here. So it comes up, it goes on this side so that when it's tight, it holds that, it holds this thing back. If the cable were to break, this thing is gonna spring closed and save your life. So I've done this one here, same way. It runs openly through here and along here. Make sure your cables are still in their pulleys here. Um, and then run it up top and bolt it to your top plate. So I've got one more to, one more to go and then on to the next step. Oh, and I should note that this little bolt here is gonna be the only one that I can't actually get undone by my hand. Anyway, you take that bolt out, then you can run the cable through the pulley and you put the bolt back on. It just holds it in there. Note, this is not how you're supposed to install this. Both of these nuts are supposed to be on the top. I was just seeing if you were paying attention. This is how they should be installed, I think. It's hard to tell from the directions because the directions don't say at all. But I'm going off of this picture here where there's clearly two nuts on the top of the cable. The diagram doesn't show. The cable diagram doesn't even pour a job, except that it says 71 there and 72 there, and it kind of looks like there's two of them. Ah, it's hard to tell. Anyway, I'm going to put two on top. Install your power unit. Four bolts, pretty simple. Weighs about 655 and a half pounds. This motor is solid. It's all there. This empty tank is not. So it's very awkward with something this heavy up top. Um, I just grabbed a stool and put a block and supported it while it got installed magically. So on to the next thing, which we'll see if we can translate the broken English to find out what to do next. Uh, remove the dust cover from the port on the side of the power unit and attach the O-ring elbow. Do not over tighten. The backing nut and O-ring will complete the seal. What? What? Will complete the seal to the power unit. So I see one cap here. Um, this looks like just a fill. Hi, Phil. And this is a big old thing. It's really dark. You can't see any of that, can you? So anyway, that looks like there's an O-ring there. I'm going to explore. And I'll tell you all about it later. Okay, so again, don't listen to the directions. This is not an elbow that you put in the power unit. It's just a, a double-sided nipple. This is the elbow. So I put one copper washer there. It came with another copper washer. Don't see a place to put it. These don't seal that way. So put this on, mount it to your hose coming out of there. Da -da 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 -da. One thing I didn't mention that the directions do mention is to make sure your hydraulic cylinder is extended all the way out before you connect your hydraulic system. Okay. Okay, so, safety lock, latch, handle thingy. Let me show you. This thing. You gotta connect this rod to this, and this rod over here through the eye hole, and come over here and hook it onto that. You slide this rod in to the end, leave this little spacer, leave it a little bit loose so it can move. Underneath here, there's a coupler and two jam nuts right here. You thread the coupler on, leave the jam nuts loose. Then you come over here to this one, insert this T-rod, leave it a little bit loose so that spacer can spin. Short, 
connecting rod long through the eye hole, connect to this one, and tighten everything up. At this point, once I check to make sure all the cables are in the pulley. Oh. Okay, so this cable is in the pulley. That one's in the pulley. Cylinders all the way out. Those are in the pulley. Uh, that one. I'm gonna have to get a flashlight. All right, flashlight time. Anyway, now next I fill it with oil and see if it lifts. That's exciting. So, I'm at the final stage. All I have to do is fill it. And then I get to test it out. So that's what I'm doing. Putting three gallons in. Uh, the directions, again, weren't clear whether or not it'll hold the three gallons right off the bat. Or whether you have to run the lift and run everything through it first. So... I guess I should go easy on this. Anyway, so I'm going to fill it. I'm going to fill it and then run it up and down. It should fill everything with hydraulic fluid. Okay, it is time. Here we go. is the cable slid off of the pulley because it was so slack. When you first lift the, uh, the lift, all of the cables are all the way slacked because you had to pull the cylinder all the way out so that it would accept all the hydraulic fluid. But when the cylinder's all the way out, the lift is supposed to be on the ground. So the difference between being on the ground and being on that first click of the safety ladder, you have that much slack cable. And in this one spot that I'm working on, the cable, because it was drooping, and these cables are actually pretty heavy, it drooped and it kind of fell off of the bottom side of the pulley. But I found, and I didn't do a very good job taking a video of this, that you can take this bolt out, the bolt that has a little tab on it, if you take that out, you can slide that down, and that basically holds the pulley in place. And when you do that, you're able to get the cable around the side of the pulley. So for the rest of this testing period, I just tapped the button so that the cable, the cables would take up very slowly um, until I was sure. I walked around and made sure every pulley was in every, or every cable was in every pulley, and then I actually lifted it up. What I'm doing here is leveling the lift. So I'm tightening this nut, which is connected to the lock ladder, which the lift is sitting on. It's being supported by the lock ladder. And by tightening this nut, I'm adjusting the lock ladder in this column up, which will hopefully help this <clears throat> become level. So. Uh, yeah, that's level. So, that's front to back. I've already done side to side in the front. So, that's side to side in the rear, which honestly looks pretty darn good. So, now I'll check front to back on this ramp. Okay, so that's interesting. It looks like the back needs to go up. 
so it'll be hard to get that to go up without affecting this. Um, so if I lift this up, it's going to do that. So I may lift that one up a little bit more, but or maybe I'll check this in a different spot. I'm kind of rambling. Sorry. Anyway, make sure your lift is level. Yeah, that definitely has to come up. So, uh, so that's what I'm doing. So now that I have all of the platforms level when they're locked into the ladders, I'm now going to level it with cables. So what I want to do is just touch this pump off until the cables get close to tight. Or at least the first one starts to get close. Okay, so this is really hard to figure out when it's close. Um, let's see. What if I do this? I'm going to try something different. So I'm going to pick the weight up. That one totally went up first. I'm going to do that, which will let me lower it below the latch. Now, the, let's see, well now that it's on the cables, all I have to do is level it. Let's try that. So now its weight is on the cables, and I will attempt to level it. Let's see how far it is out. Okay, so that is not out very much at all. That is definitely out. So this side, nope. The right side needs to come up and the left side needs to go down. Okay, and front to back. Front to back is really challenging. It says it's okay. Yeah, it says it's perfect, so. Um, I'm going to bring that side down. Yeah, I'm going to bring this side down. So I'll get my handy dandy wrench. Loosen this first one, maybe. Oh, that's not what I want to do. So I can't do this with one hand, so. I'm going to loosen that, trust me. Okay, that is it. I have it figured out. All of the locks click at exactly the same time. Um, so now I'm going to go just double check those nuts up top are tight. And then I'm going to put a vehicle on this thing. I mean, right? It's what I've been waiting for. All right. Should be good right there, actually. I just like pressing the button. Okay, so now I'm going to tighten these up top. I don't. I didn't actually adjust this one. So yeah. Okay. Time to try it. I guess. Well, seems to work. <laughs>
relatively uneventful actually. The car went up and it sat on the locks. And now I can work on my cars with ease. Hopefully. Um, yeah. I'm pretty psyched. Oh, look at that. I got an expansion joint going. Oh, look at this. I got to do this. And oh, I got to do this. Oh, oh, I just created a lot of work for myself. Um, cool. I could do an all change, but I'm curious to see if the Suburban fits on here. So I'm going to go ahead and let it down. First, you got to let it up off the locks. Oh, that's about as high as it goes. And it goes down quite a bit faster. I'm actually really psyched with that. Another happy customer. Damn. Sweet. 